Welcome to I'm Your Target Demographic. Today we are talking about what is Warhammer. Warhammer is a tabletop war game created by a business called Games Workshop. Uh, it started back in 1983 with Warhammer Fantasy Battles. And in 1987, it branched off to Warhammer, uh, it's called Warhammer 40,000, or shortened to Warhammer 40K, which is a science fiction set in the far future version of the game. So there's a fantasy, there's a sci-fi. And it's a tabletop war game, so there's a huge table that people play on, and they use little miniatures, and they move them around. So in this video, we're going to talk about why people do this, uh, the basics of the game, and what it has kind of offshooted to, so things like video games. I am not going to be covering the story. So if you're looking for like what's happening in the world of Warhammer, that's not what this video is. This is for people that know nothing and just want to know why do people do that? What is that? Instead of all the intricacies of what's happening in the story. If you're interested in that, I'm sure there's a lot of videos, but that's not what this is. So throughout the video, I'm going to be showing you images both of popular YouTube channels that focus on wargaming, and so you'll see different uh, games that they're playing and things like that. And I'm also going to show you examples from my experience. So you'll see my own table set up at home. You'll see my armies that I've painted. You'll see pictures that I've taken of my armies and different models. Uh, so that I can kind of give you reference as to what I've done. So there's a lot of different ways for someone to engage in Warhammer, and there's different types of hobbyists. And so I'm going to start like you just wanted to start the game. What do you do? So you want to buy a starter pack for Warhammer at either a specific games workshop store or most hobby shops. Choosing what to buy as a beginner is relatively easy, as they have designated kits just for that, which come with enough figures and a basic rulebook for you. When you open the box, everything is unassembled and unpainted. This is my favorite part of the hobby. When I assembled all the models that you're seeing, I had a workstation set up in my apartment with all the paint uh, and glue and everything you need to put these figures together. However, the starter kit is just a taste. Once you decide to dive in, you need to choose what army you really want to play as. There's a huge selection with at least 15 different armies to choose from. For fantasy, this might be something like Wood Elves. The undead, ogres, goblins, or demons. For 40k, it gets a little more exotic with things such as the alien tyranids, or you could stick to the more familiar space marines. Each army has a book that you would buy, which outlines the different models and what they do in the game. So here's where the fun comes in. You decide entirely how to compose your army. Let's say I was making a wood elf army, like the one on screen. I built mine around tree spirits, so things like nimble wood dryads and large tree kin. These models all act different on the field. You use a ruler to navigate, so a group of dryads might be able to move 8 inches a turn. Now models have varying numbers, which represents how fast they are. So in a big game, when you have lots of choices, you can move specific models into different formations to try to capitalize on what makes those models strong. The table is also usually covered in various terrain, which you'll need to take into account. My eagle might be able to fly over certain terrains, so he'd serve a very different purpose. Each type of model has unique abilities. My homemade tree man might shake the ground he walks on, knocking other units over. In 40k, I've got a group of orcs armed with various weapons. Ones with pistols might do one thing, while ones armed with flamethrowers might need to watch out for fear of hurting their own units. There are also different rules for entire armies. These orcs might need to stay near the commander, or they might decide to go rogue and abandon the battle. The wood elves might get bonuses if they're near a tree terrain, so that might decide how you approach the battle. With at least 15 armies to choose from, each battle will be very different. You use dice for a lot of purposes in the game as well. So when you finally engage in battle, you'll check your rulebook for how many dice each gets to roll, and what number you need to succeed. So while you do have a lot of flexibility, some things are determined by luck. So now you've played the starter kit a few times, you've chosen what army to actually collect, you've bought them, you've painted them, they're ready to go. Where do you find people to play? Most hobby shops have tables and terrain ready for people to play war games, be it Warhammer or any of the other games that have become popular. You can meet a lot of people in these stores that you can play with, as well as learn from. They also tend to have painting stations. When I was just learning to paint, I learned a lot of great techniques by spending a Saturday just painting with other folks. This is also a chance to see huge battles play out with more players and bigger miniatures. Some, like this Tyranid Bio-Titan, dwarf anything else on the field. So why wouldn't you use something like that? 
When you're playing someone, there's a process for how many and what models you get to use for the game. It might be a set number of points, where each model has a point value. A game of a thousand points might mean you can either choose a lot of small models, if you're playing something like Tyranids, or a few really powerful models for things like Space Marines. This way, the armies should be relatively balanced. You also get some customizable options when you're actually building the models. They might come with all sorts of options that you can choose from, so like, this Stegodon from a Lizard army is decked out with a bolt thrower and a crew of lizards to shoot it. But when I built it, I could have chosen a wizard to stand on top and do spells instead of that bolt thrower. You can deck out your warriors with a sword and a shield if you want to be more defensive. Or you can do double weapons if you just want them to roll more dice for attacking. You can compose, build, paint, and play your army however you want. And you might be thinking this looks really rad, but here's the downside. It is incredibly expensive to play either version of Warhammer. The starter set for Fantasy right now is $125, and 40k is $110. But both of these contain enough models to play a small game, plus dice, rulers, and a basic rulebook. There are bigger rulebooks with much more extensive rules that you could buy. You'll also want the coolest models in your army. This guy, a commander for one of the armies, is $50 by himself. And remember that they come unpainted. So you'll need to invest in tons of paint, brushes, glues, fake grass and rocks for your bases. It's an incredibly expensive hobby, but you definitely get a lot of time, as a long game can take you an entire day to play, plus countless hours painting and prepping your armies. I used to buy an army, paint it up to perfection, and then sell it for a little more than I paid for it. So there's a lot of people out there that don't like painting. They don't want to deal with any of that. So they're willing to pay a little extra to have someone do it for them. So me, playing the game, not really interested, but building the armies, putting them together, painting them, that is what I enjoyed. So that's the basics. Warhammer has branched out to more than just a tabletop game, though. There's been several video games, including the popular Dawn of War series. Myself, I'm hoping for a sequel to the game Space Marine. There's also a huge amount of books that you can dive into if the world sounds interesting. Creative people use these books to thematically create an army, such as choosing specific units to match what happens in the book. So in a nutshell, Warhammer is a tabletop war game. You can go the route of choosing Fantasy, its latest iteration called Age of Sigmar, or you can go the route of Warhammer 40,000. You can paint and model, or you can look for pre-painted armies on eBay for usually around five to $800. I've seen expertly painted armies for thousands of dollars. You can also look up your nearest hobby shop and see if they have days designated for Warhammer that you can stop by and watch people play and ask questions. They also usually have the starter kit set up so that the staff can play a game with you and you can see how it actually plays. So that's it for this week. That's Warhammer. We'll see you next Wednesday for another What Is. Peace out.